good? Okay. Hi, everyone. So, I'm the last speaker of the night, I think. Right? And I'm, I'm the only guy standing between uh, you and your booth and more booths. So, I'm not sure how attentive you are going to be. But I hope you will be. Because it's going to be a very long and boring talk. And uh, only one guy in front is laughing. So, I'm not sure where the rest of you have heard me. Can anyone hear me at the back? That's okay? Great, thank you. So, uh, yep, so this is what I'm going to talk about. And what the title says is exactly what you're going to get, right? You're going to get genetic algorithms and you're going to get Go. Anyone here knows what genetic algorithms are? Any hands? Okay, I see my guys there. Um, because I, I gave this talk actually earlier on. Anyone else here? Okay, one guy. Great. Uh, anyone here does Go? Okay, few guys. Okay, I think I'm in trouble, but never mind. Let's push on. Okay, um, as mentioned before, I work in SB Digital. Am I too loud or am I okay? Okay, because I can't really hear myself too well. Uh, I work in SB Digital. This is a new team. Uh, we are a subsidiary for Singapore Power. So the bright lights that you see in front of you and everything else that's covering here is provided by my company. Right. How cool is that? Right. Uh, I'm also the organizer for GovCon Singapore 2018. Right, right. that's uh, Valentine, my co-organizer. So uh, that's the website. Please visit us and uh, please buy tickets. Please come to our event. It's going to be really exciting. I, I promise you, I'm not going to speak there. Okay. <laughs> okay. What are genetic algorithms? So the uh, definition here: they are software algorithms that are based on the process of natural selection. Going back to the bit of biology. Anyone here knows what natural selection is? One, one guy, two guys? Really? Nobody knows what natural selection is? Anyone here, like three guys, um, from your secondary school days, high school days, or whatever? No? OK. Um, let me try to push on, right? So natural selection is a natural process that causes populations of organisms to adapt to the environment over time. Um, so. Why am I doing this? So one of the big reasons that um, computer algorithms exist today is because it actually mimics the natural world. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I want to talk about it, because algorithms are not unnatural. So they are following a part of the natural world. And uh, what I want to actually express today is that um, whatever we see today in the real world are actually algorithms as well. So anyway, let me get a little bit into that. Um, what is natural selection? So this is an example of what natural selection is. In uh, the early 1980s, the peppered moth in England were mostly white. Right? So this is an example. Can you see where the uh, moth is? Can you see where the black moth is? Yes? Uh, can you see where the white moth is? If you can't, that's where the, the red the oval is. Right? That's where the white moth is. So um, this actually helped it to hide from predatory birds because it blended well right, with the trees and the lichens. Um, and so they survived. But during the industrial pollution, the lichens died, and the trees were blackened by soot. So this gave the dark moths an advantage in hiding against predators. So you look here again at this picture. Can you see the black moth? It's actually pretty hard because you know, it's... Uh, but the white moth is very visible. So naturally, they got killed off by the, the predators. By the end of the century, most of the pepper moths were of a dark variety. So that's, that's quite normal. But um, what is more startling is that after the Clean Air Act in 1956, the dark colored moths became uh, common again. So that's an example of uh, natural selection. So um, what I want to talk about that is, uh, I just want to give you a flavor of what natural selection is and um, some jargon that you will get as I go on. Um, we have something called organism. This is the subject of study that we, we are uh, looking at that is struggling for survival. The DNA ge carries in ge genetic uh, information. The population, this is the uh, group of organisms. Uh, the fitness is a measure of how well adapted organism is to the environment. Um, selection, organisms with the best fitness have a higher chance of reproduction. Reproduction, the generation of population from the selected best fit organisms, uh, inheritance. So this is really the crux of the matter. The next generation inherits from the previous generation. 
and mutation. Each generation, there's a small chance the values of the genes change. Okay, so everyone got that? Clear? I can go on? Okay, great. So, first algorithm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the infinite monkey theorem. Anyone heard about this? It's actually very plainly mentioned here, right? Uh, when an infinite number of monkeys sitting and an infinite number of typewriters randomly hitting keys, he didn't have enough time to eventually produce the complete works of Shakespeare. What do you think? Is that possible? No? So, what I'm trying to reproduce here is the classic one, to be or not to be. Anyone here knows where this comes from? Hamlet? Yes, that's right. Um, who is this guy next to it? No? Uh, that's Shakespeare, man. Okay, so what's the probability of randomly typing exactly the same sequence? What do you think? One out of any number? Come again? 12? 12,000? 12 million? Okay, to be exact, there's actually 18 characters here, right? And the probability, in case, you know, this refreshes back to your like high school or secondary school mathematics, is 1 to the power of 26, if it's like, you know, 26 characters in the alphabet, multiplied by 18 times. So what do you think that number is? That's 1 out of 29 billion trillion, right? The probability is that. So, do you think we can get it overdone with by tonight? What do you think? So if a monkey types a letter every second, there's one chance out of this number of years they will type out a code. And what does that mean? That's one time in 934 trillion years. Right? I think it is going to be a very, very long night. We're going to stay here if we're going to do this. Right? So what are we going to do? Obviously, right? That's what I'm here for. I'm going to tell you how genetic algorithms has come to the rescue. Okay? And here is where the part where you see code. You start to see Go code. Don't panic. It is not that difficult. I'll go through it. Okay? So let's start with defining an organism. Um, here I define an organism as a strut with uh, uh, two variables. One is the DNA, which is nothing more than a byte array representing the DNA. And the fitness is how well the DNA matches the phrase to be or not to be. Okay? Then uh, we need to create an initial population organism. Remember what we learned earlier on? You need to create a population. Okay? Here I'm just creating a random population of um, organisms. Right? And um, I just create them randomly because I'm going to evolve this random population into the actual characters, uh, actual phrase to be or not to be. Next, I find the fitness of the organisms. Um, and the fitness is really nothing more than to see how closely the DNA, which is the byte array, matches the phrase to be or not to be. Okay? So zero means it's totally, completely different. And one means it's an exact match. And there's a code below. Um, so next thing we want to do is to select the organisms with the best fitness and give them a higher chance to reproduce. What we do is to create something called a breeding pool, which is a mechanism that places a number of copies of the same organism according to its fitness. So the more, the fitter it is, the more copies of it you will find in the breeding pool. Okay? Um, and why do we do this? This is because you want to give it higher probability of being picked on to pass the DNA. Okay? So this is the code. It's pretty simple. And um, the next thing we want to do is we want to take two parents from the breeding pool, bring them together and mate them, okay? So obviously, if you have more copies in the pool, there will be more chances that you'll be picked. Okay, so that's, that's what it is. Um, and what I do is, yeah, I take these two parents and I, what I do is a, a function called crossover. I breed these two together and allow them to inherit the DNA. Okay, what do I mean by breeding them? What do I mean by crossover? Crossover is a very simple mechanism. So I take these two parents from this green pool. Let's say this is a byte array here, and there's a byte array right there. I put them together. I select a midpoint, and uh, I pick whatever is from the beginning to the midpoint, and from the midpoint to the, the end, I bring them together, 
and voila, you have a child, right? This is getting two parents, marrying them together to produce a child. Simple? Of course, I can't go away without mutating each generation. Uh, why do I do that? It's actually very simple. If mutation doesn't exist, the DNA within a population will always remain the same. And what this means is, if I don't have a particular gene to begin with, the optimum results will never ever be, result, uh, be achieved. Very simply, if I say the letter T wasn't found in the original population, we will never be able to, to come out with the, um, the phrase. Because the crossover is just basically mixing around all the, um, all the uh, organisms, right? If none of the organisms have T, you will never be able to get a phrase. So how do we do that? How do we avoid doing that? It's mutation. Basically, we need to create a probability of one of these particular uh, bytes mutating to something else and then uh, allow it to change. Okay, and that's the code. Uh, and then we're done. This is it. This is the genetic algorithm. And we run the main function. Basically, what I do is I run it through a number of times. And let me do a demo again. Who is this guy? Great. Just to get your attention, yeah? Because, oops. Oh, shoot. Drop mic. Okay. Okay. Um, demo time. Okay. 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 Go run main.go. So, how fast do you think that will come out? Any guesses? How long you would take? Five minutes? Any other takers here? One minute? Okay, let me run it. You see the fitness there? It's basically hovering the fitness. 11 seconds. Okay, so I basically randomly generated and evolved a byte array to say to be or not to be in 11 seconds. Okay, so that's the code, right? So um, did I cheat somewhere? Is that really the code? Yeah, um, so this is the code. Um, where is it? Okay, this is the code. Okay around 150 lines of code. All right, so that's um, the first algorithm that I wanted to show you guys. Let me get back into the slides. It's taking a while. All right, let's move on from Shakespeare. So, um, so every time you run it, it was going to be slightly different, okay? So this is an example of how I ran it, uh, two seconds, 152 milliseconds, 500 over milliseconds. Um, generally speaking, it's random, right? So I can't really control how, how fast it, it runs, but it will not be 934 trillion years, okay? I can assure you that. All right, so the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to evolve Mona Lisa, okay? Okay, I'm going to do a demo first because it's going to take more than 11 seconds. Um, who is this guy? Da Vinci, right, great. Thank you. Just want to make sure that you guys are still sober. You know? Okay, I'm going to run the code now. Right? By the way, Go is compilable, but I just want to show you that I'm not cheating, so I'm just running the code. So, um, okay, I can't see that here. So what you see here is, um, let me increase the size a bit. Okay, I'm running this, and uh, let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, you see something here. Let me go into the slides, and then we'll come back to the results in a short while. Okay. Um, should come back up anytime now. Okay. Da Vinci. Right, so just to set a context of the difficulty as compared to the previous demo. So just now I had 18 bytes, right? 
uh, but here I'm taking a, I'm actually reducing the size of the image. It's a 100 pixels by 67 pixel image. So that's like 6,700 pixels. So each pixel has four bytes. Um, that's 26,800 bytes compared to 18 bytes. So the level of complexity is like, um, I don't know, many, many times more. Okay? So it is not actually exactly a, a simpler uh, a piece of work. So let's start all again. It's exactly the same thing. We start off with defining an organism, but instead of the DNA being a byte array, we say the DNA is now an image.rgba. Image.rgba is basically a way to define an image in Go. Okay? The fitness is still the same. Okay? Fitness defines uh, how well the DNA matches the picture of Mona Lisa. Right? So what is um, our DNA? Where does the byte array come from? So the byte array comes here. You look carefully here. This is the byte array. Right? So the byte array depicts. Okay? So what is this pix? Pix is a byte array of pixels. Very simply put, it is just laying out all the pixels, R, G, B, A, in a row. Just one long array. Okay? R, G, B, A, R, G, B, A, R, G, B, until 26,800. That's what it is. So when we create an initial population of organisms, um, what we basically do is we randomly generate pixels. We randomly generate pixels by randomly selecting the uh, byte values. And what do we get? Because it's randomly generated pixels, this is basically what you're going to get, right? A basically a random image. In fact, you saw somewhat saw that just now when I was doing the demo. Um, so how do we find the fitness of the organisms? This is where we get into a little bit of uh, your basic, I don't know, do you study this in primary school or secondary school? I forget because it's been so long ago. Right. Primary, secondary, Pythagoras theorem. Secondary, okay. Right. One of the recent graduates. Okay. Um, so distance is x squared plus y squared root. Right? So the distance between two points is x2 minus x1, y2 minus x1, then you use uh, square it, add it together, and then you, you do a square root of it. So how do we find the difference between two images? In Pythagoras theorem, we are talking about two points. That's in two-dimensional space. Here, if you do it further on, it will be in three-dimensional space. We do the Pythagoras theorem in two times. If it's four-dimensional space, we do it three times. RGBA is basically a point in four-dimensional space. Remember? RGBA, so there are four points. So what do you do? Uh, the difference between two pixels is this. R2 minus R1 plus a squared plus G2 minus G1 squared plus B2 minus B1 squared plus A2 minus A1 squared. So that's basically it, right? But there's a trick. If you have to do that for every pixel, they have to do an iteration, iteration, a loop for 26,800 times. But we don't do that. We, or rather, we don't need to do that. Why? Because PIX is basically one long byte array sequence of RGBA, right? So if you want to find a difference, you just do this. You put R squared minus R2 minus R1 squared plus G2 minus R squared for the first pixel. Then you add to the second pixel, third pixel, fourth pixel, and all until all the last pixel. And then you do the square of the whole thing. And that's basically the difference. It's kind of a cheating, I know, but hey, you know, when the language gives you a way to cheat, why not, right? So this is what it is. Um, you find the difference by um, squaring it, you, drawing the difference, and then do a uh, square root of it. Pretty simple. That's the difference. Okay, the next, you get the organisms with the best fitness and give them a higher chance of reproduction. We are still using the breeding pool mechanism here, but there's a slight difference. What's the difference? Because if we use the difference, it can be quite a big number. So what do we do? We use what, we call, what I call a differentiated fitness. I uh, subtract the largest, the best fit from the worst fit, so you get a number, right? So the first X number of them will have a much smaller number, but you can still differentiate between them. Okay. Um, so for example, the difference between the best fit and the least fit is 20. We place 20 organisms in the brewing pool. That's, that's all. Um, if there's no difference, then we are screwed because we can't really create a new brewing pool. To, to overcome that, we just copy the, breed, the population and then we start all over again. Okay. This is how we create a brewing pool. Are you guys still with me? It's okay? All right. 
At least those people are right. My team is still with me. Great. Okay, so we create the next generation of populations from the selected best fit. It's the same thing as the previous code, so no difference. Exact same code. This is also the exact same code, except um, I use the image.rgb. And uh, it's the same way. I have bike race, I have bike race, I just find the midpoint, I slice it from the midpoint, and then slice it from the midpoint here, and then combine them together. And then I randomly mutate this generation. Exactly the same, no difference. This is the genetic algorithm. Okay? And finally, we run our genetic algorithm. All right, so let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm not going to show you the results first. Let me see how long we have lasted. And uh, this is live, by the way, so I don't really know how it's going to end. So let's see. Okay, um, so Mona Lisa, this is the original picture. We go down. 100 generations later, uh, not really. 200 generations, not really. 300, no. 400, no. 500, no. 600, no. 700, no. 800, no. 900, no. 1,000, no, 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 no. Uh, are you guys seeing something here? Seeing something here? 1,008, 1,009, 2,000, 2,001, 2,002, 2,003, 2,004, 5, 6. I'm just thought still here. I think I spoke a little bit quickly because it's still running. Um, but let me get back to the slides and I'll show you a little bit more. Um, it's still running at the back end. So I will, um, I will show you later. I will talk a little bit more and then uh, show you the results. Okay, this is the code. We run the code. And these are the sample results. Can you make out Mona Lisa? Okay. So that's about, about the... Um, the mark of about 7,000, the difference is about 7,000. Right? Uh, it never actually goes down to zero, by the way. Uh, it takes too long. I, I never run it until, two, uh, two, it gets, just takes too long, right? I, I need my laptop for something else, so I never run it until zero. Um, but you can see how it goes. Now, I try to do it something else. Uh, instead of randomly creating uh, pixels, what I do is I randomly generate triangles. And random triangles, random triangles, random triangles, and so on, the last one. Can you make out Mona Lisa? Yes? No? I don't know, maybe, right? Um, here I try with circles, right? I randomly generate circles. And I randomly generate circles, random, 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 random. You squint really hard, you try really hard, maybe you can see uh, Mona Lisa. But that's, that's the general principle. Okay, so uh, let's quickly run back to the... code and see what happens. Yeah, so that's about nine minutes you get around there. So about um, 20 minutes they actually get a, quite a good image, but uh, this is what we have. Now uh, I have about two minutes left. Um, I will show you the last slide, it will come out in a short while, but um, I actually put this code on GitHub, so this code is on GitHub. This gives me a legitimacy to talk to you because it's a GitHub event. <laughs> And I also put up my blog on GitHub as well, right? So I should get double bonus, right? Don't I? No? <laughs> anyway, um, that's all I have today. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> any questions? Do we have any questions? The usual thing? Oh, everyone too drunk to... Yeah, I think everybody wants a drink. So yeah. thank you very much, Sao Shong. Thank you. Thank also, you. thank you to Sao Shong's groupies down here in the corner. Thank mm -hmm. you.